Hi, today I have a total body full length booty kicker workout for you. Hi, my name is Mariah. Welcome to my channel. I bring you on the regular bar, Pilates, and yoga workout videos. So if you're into free workouts that are low impact and totally sculpt your body, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Now today I'm going to be utilizing my new booty kicker, which is an amazing at home portable bar. If you don't have one, no worries. You are welcome to use like a chair or a countertop as your bar, but I'll tell you at the end um, how to get hold of a booty kicker if you want one, because I absolutely love it. Other than the booty kicker or a, some type of makeshift bar, you don't need anything. Let's get started. We'll start our warm up facing to the side of the bar. We're going to start with some squats. Down and up. Down and up. Don't necessarily need to hold onto the bar for this first bit. We're going to throw something at you in a second where you might want to have it close by. Down and up. It's important when you squat that you make sure that you can see the front of your shins on the way down. Yes. And then we're going to introduce a little extra strength and a little balance for you by doing a single leg squat. Next time we squat on one leg. Ah. Come back to center, double leg squat. Take it back up. Next time, single leg squat on the other side. So this may take a little coordination, all good. Don't worry if you get anything out of order. We're just alternating a single leg squat with a double leg squat, making sure every time you go back into another single leg squat that you've switched sides from the one before. So, so good. Now, of course, your single leg squats, you may not go quite as deep, that's all right. And we're just warming up right now anyway, getting the tissues nice and warm and elasticized so we can go deeper into the work a little bit later on. Very nice. Also good to work the legs one at a time, which we're gonna do a lot of today, a lot of single leg work, just in case one happens to be stronger than the other, if you're overcoming maybe injuries and compensating on a different side, or maybe just your daily habits have you favoring one side over the other. Do a lot of single leg work today. So good, and then from there, we're gonna take it up a notch for the heart rate. So we're actually gonna do a little bit of shuffle here. So give yourself a little bit of room from the bar as you shuffle, leg lift, shuffle in, leg lift, shuffle in, leg lift. If you have longer legs, you wanna make sure you've stepped a little bit further away from the bar so you're not kicking it on that one side. You got it. Very nice, a little bit of lateral movement. That means we're going side to side because your body is designed to move side to side. Although in everyday life, we tend to go just mostly forward. Very good. Maybe picking up the speed a little bit. You got it. Nice. We're just warming up in the heart rate so we can get nice warm muscles. Couple more here, please. Perfect. We're gonna stand slightly away from the bar for this one as we come into our wood choppers. Now you don't have to go all the way down to the ground. We're not holding on to anything today. So sometimes we'll do a wood chopper like with a ball for a frame of reference, but we're just reaching and lifting, reaching and lifting. So it's a twist, the back heel lifts away as you twist. Be careful as you come down for the wood chopper. Let's try to keep the knees even rather than caving them over to one side. Very nice. Let's do two. One, and now let's take it to the other side. Don't want to get dizzy here. Good. So rotation is important for that spine. We'll do more rotation later in our standing series. So you want to make sure that that spine is warmed up in that plane of motion. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you rise. Good. Reach for that back corner. Here's three, here's two, here's one, fantastic. We're gonna step out nice and wide. You can hold onto the bar for balance here. As we step out into our plie, 
So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take the heels um, to the traditional plie at once. Maybe the arm comes overhead. Next time you come up, let's lift the heels off. So it's one plie heels down, next one heels come away. Very good. Warming up those inner thighs, getting those adductors primed and ready for action. Little balance challenge, that's why we've got that bar there. If you don't need the bar for this and you prefer to add a little bit more balance challenge, of course you could have both arms overhead. Nice. But of course, if you want that extra balance, there is that bar or counter or chair or whatever you happen to be using. I love this booty bar though, and I'll tell you how to get one at the end. All right, let's do three, two, last one. Amazing, and it's time to come down onto the ground for our upper body and core warm up. All right, we're gonna come into a push up. Now, if being uh, in a push-up with your knees elevated doesn't work for you, then you can have your knees on the ground. You would just omit the next part. Otherwise, knees can lift, and every time you come up from that push-up, you're gonna roll over into a side plank. So you roll over into that side plank, come back, take another push-up. This is a traditional grip push-up, meaning that we are taking the elbows away from the body, so they move towards the right and left walls of the room. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you rise for the push-up. We're kind of staggering those feet so it's easy to move in and out for that side plank. Nice, you can always take a rest when you need. Very good, let's do one more on each side with that side plank if you're taking it. Perfect, now you can take a rest or you can up the ante for a little finale at the end of our warm up. From here, taking the elbows, instead of moving them to the right and left side of the room, we're gonna move, point them behind you. So you're squeezing your rib cage as you lower down a little chaturanga from yoga. Tops of the feet to the mat, you're gonna press up into your upward facing dog or cobra. Good, and then press it back to a downward facing dog and roll back up into a plank. Let's do that again. We're gonna lower down slowly, elbows point behind you this time, all the way behind you. Good, inhale, upward facing dog. Because bar is actually a fusion of ballet, yoga, Pilates, and strength training. So you'll see some moves now and then from, from non-ballet backgrounds, non-ballet formats. Good. And it's how we put them all together that turns it into a bar class, as we'll see, especially in the next section after our warm up where we add the sequencing. Nice. Now, if this is going well for you and you want a little bit more heat, rather than taking the belly all the way down, next time just hover about halfway down till those elbows are at 90 degrees. Remember, this is optional. And then press back up into your upward facing dog. And if you still want a little more, instead of taking it straight to down dog right away, come back to that chaturanga, that half push up, ooh, and then take it back to that down dog. Ah, lower those heels, and then shoulders come over wrists. Let's do a couple more just to get the upper body and core warmed up. So your choice, you can always have your knees on the mat too. I should have mentioned that earlier. You can have your knees on the mat the whole time as well. Very good. Finishing up that last one, it feels so good to warm up the spine, the shoulders, get that, those abdominals fired up. And then pause here. Just like we did before, we're gonna lower down, but we're gonna slow it way, way down. We're gonna lower for a count of five, four, three. Yes, you can do. One, come all the way down. Let's just hold upward facing dog for a moment. Drawing the shoulder heads way, way back. Chest lifts up towards the ceiling. And then we'll press those hips back into a child's pose just for one second. We did all that good work to get the body heat going so we don't wanna lose it. <sighs> and then let's come to rise. You can grab a drink of water if you'd like as we move into our vertical section. So standing at the bar. And again, we're just using that bar for balance if we need. For this first round, if you don't feel like you need the bar, feel free to step away from it. 
We're gonna start with a sumo squat. So that means the feet are facing forwards. All 10 toes are parallel. But we're gonna go slightly wider than hip width distance and it's down and up. And then right off the bat, we're gonna split the toes out for a plie. Good, come back up. Then toes come forward for a sumo squat. Come up right into that plie. So you'll notice the sumo squat, your body kind of has to hinge forward, that's all good, but you're gonna draw the shoulders away from the ears. With a plie, of course, we're gonna come upright, shoulders stay over hips, because they can. Nice. And typically with these standing movements, we're gonna inhale as we lower, exhale as we rise. Very good. Those hips are getting warmed up through this external rotation. And we are in kind of more of the bar section, like a traditional choreography section of our workout, which means we're gonna add some different layers so that we can really milk these movements and find muscular endurance. So here's what I mean by that. Let's, the next time you take a plie, let's stay in that plie. We're gonna come to the bottom and then lift up only halfway, take it back down low. Only halfway, take it back down low. Let's do six, five, good four. Let's keep the shoulders over the hips. Here's two, one, and then take those toes forward. Eight counts for sumo, but we're gonna stay on this lower half. Good. Here's six, five, good. Really sinking the weight back into those heels. Three, two, and one. Toes pivot back. Now we're gonna do four and four. Four and four. As soon as we've done those four, we're gonna take it back into the other direction. And we're gonna do that again. Four times in your sumo, four times in your plie. And when you finish with that, what if we did twos and twos next? So whenever you're ready, no rush, we're gonna go two sumos, two plies. So, so good. Ah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff you can, yes. Now next time you're in that sumo squat, I want you to stay there. We're just gonna go up and down, tiny one inch pulses. We're gonna keep that sumo. So feet are parallel, wider than hip width distance though. Yes, just teeny movements. Let's try to avoid bouncing here. We're gonna keep it slow and steady. and then take your toes out. We're gonna do the same thing, but in our plie, little pulses up, 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 up. Just teeny little movements, slow and controlled, fatiguing those muscles. For three, two, one, and let's straighten those legs. That feels good. Unfortunately, we're not gonna stay um, standing for long or we're gonna bend those knees again for our side facing deadlifts so this time you probably will want to hold on to that bar you're gonna take the outside leg and start to bend it as you hinge forward so the standing leg on the inside stays straight you're gonna hinge forward draw your belly in and then come back up so that back that outside knee stays bent good there we go, coming back up tall. So we're strengthening now our backside of our glutes, our hamstrings, our low back. It's important to keep the belly pulled in though. If this is irritating your back at all, just don't come down so far. Very nice, inhale as you lower, exhale as you come up tall. So the standing leg is straight for now. That's gonna change in a moment, nice. Now the next time that you come forward, so your torso is leaning, going almost parallel, maybe it's parallel, maybe it's not, depending on what you're needing today. We're gonna come only halfway up and then take it back down. So you're lifting the chest slightly and then coming back down. Super important that the abdominals are pulling into the back. Good, it's like you're trying to lift your belly button away from the floor. Yes, yes, yes. For two. One, now listen carefully. You're gonna keep the standing leg still. And this time from that bent hinge over position, the, we're gonna lift the outside leg just like you were trying to stamp the heel up to the ceiling. Donkey kicks, little lift, lift, lift. So you're squeezing the outside of the seat just to try to get that heel closer to the ceiling and then maybe it comes back to parallel. You got it. 
Oh my goodness. This is so good for your booty. Why do you think we call this the booty kicker? Now you know in case you didn't. All right, we're gonna do something a little bit different now. We're going to add a lower half range from a bent knee. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna keep the lower leg, the standing leg bent, and then we're just gonna take the lower half of that donkey kick with the outside, yep. So we've added a bend to the standing leg is what just happened. I'm gonna make it a little bit nicer on the back, a little bit harder on the booty though. You got it, a little bit of extra quad work in the standing leg as well. And then from here, we're gonna do single leg squats with the inside leg, but then it's gonna be a, an outside crossing of the knee behind. And I don't feel like I said that very well, so if you need to just watch me, go ahead, take a quick peek up. So both knees bend as the outside knee comes behind the inside one, and then we come back to that static position, that forward fold, so good. Very nice. Yup, here's three, two, one. Pause back in that forward fold. Let's put a little bend in the standing leg again and we're just gonna do little pulses. Lift, lift, lift. I know this is insane for four, three, two, and one. Come all the way up. That's amazing. And then you're just gonna spin around. So you're actually gonna see, um, so I don't have multiple camera angles today. I'm just gonna go backwards for this, but hopefully you can kind of see, maybe have a better idea of what's going on in the back leg as well. So sorry to have my back to you, but maybe that'll actually help you see a few more nuances of the pose. So we're gonna start with that side facing deadlift. So you're reaching towards the ground, standing leg is straight to begin, and then we come all the way up. We'll keep that outside knee bent, it's gonna be down and up, good, down, and up, very nice. So we're really firing up the hamstrings to help control the descent and ascent of the torso. Let's do four more, shall we? Good, so standing leg is straight and engaged without being flexed or hyper extended. And then we're gonna move to a bottom range. So super important here that we keep the belly pulled in. So you're going all the way down to what your end range was, but you're only lifting the torso halfway. All the way down, only lifting halfway up. Very good. Trying to keep those hips level. So notice that that outside hip wants to kind of lift a little. Try to keep them level. Good, exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. Okay, pause here. We're gonna put a bend into that standing leg, and then that outside leg is just gonna lift up for a little donkey kick. So sing, standing leg stays still, the outside leg's gonna do a little lift, 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 lift. Keep pulling belly in towards spine, you can do it. Making sure that standing knee is not sneaking forward. You really wanna take the booty back behind you so that we can keep that standing knee happy. We'll be able to see the front of your shin of that standing leg. Very nice. And then we're gonna add a little straightening of the single leg as we lift, or the standing leg as we lift up. And then outside knee wraps behind the inside knee as we both knees bend. Good. Again, this one's kind of hard to explain, so if you want to just make sure you take a quick peek up at me, it's all good. And then as soon as you feel like you have it, let's take your head back down. So we protect the neck, keep the back of the neck long. We're still doing that same thing. <laughs> a lot of reps in bar, but we change up the angle of the joints and this, this way that we approach the movement so that we are keeping the joints happy. So we get the best burn for the muscles, but the safest uh, care for those joints. You got it. And then we're gonna take it back to that little deadlift position, tilting it forward. Take a little pulses just with that leg. So those donkey kicks for little teeny pulses. So this is at the, kind of the highest part portion of that donkey kick, but without arching in the back. You got it, little pulses. We're still bending into that standing leg. For three, two, and one. Amazing, it's time to come up. 
Whew. Rolling right along. Curtsy lunges are next. Um, so for this one, we can actually stay fit, go actually go towards the bar if you'd like, or you can be side facing. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna go um, into our curtsy lunge, but this time, today we're gonna keep the heels up. So we're actually gonna be in what we call releve from ballet, just meaning the heels are off the ground the whole time if that works for you. Otherwise, you're welcome to put those heels on the ground. So one leg wraps behind the other and it's gonna be down and up, down and up. If you're facing to the side, you could take maybe the outside arm down and up with you in a pretty range of motion. If you're facing that bar, all good. You can just have both hands on the bar for balance. Very nice. And then let's challenge ourselves a little bit by taking it to the lower half. So we're only gonna lift up halfway. Legs partially straight and come back down. Lifting part of the way up, come back down. Shoulders remain over the hips, so we're staying super upright. Imagine you had a wall behind your back and you could touch your shoulder blades to it the whole time. Very good. Whew, hoping we feel a little bit of shaky shake here. So nice. Little pulses are next. You're finding the lowest portion that your knees are okay with. I didn't necessarily say your muscles. I'm okay with you challenging your muscles, but let's keep those knees happy for little one inch lift. Lift, lift. Slower is better. You are in control of this movement. You have so much power and grace that you're demonstrating right now. I'm so proud of you. Very good. Okay, cool. We're gonna stay here at this lowest portion of our curtsy line, our curtsy, curtsy here. And we're going to take a little side reach now towards the bar and then come back up. So side bend, come back up. So we're stretching and strengthening the waist. So nice. Let's find a couple more. Here it is. And now we're gonna take the hand down onto the hip. Now we finally get to take those heels down, but oh, just for a second, bring them back up. Take them down, oh, pop them back up. Just like the something's hot underneath those heels when they touch the ground, you're just gonna whoop, touch and then lift them right back up. For four, three, here's two, and here's one. Amazing. We're just gonna do a little flip a -roo. And again, I'm gonna have my back to you today just because I only have one, one bar and I don't have multiple camera angles today. So I'm just gonna go take my back to you, that's okay. And it's gonna be a curtsy lunge down, rise all the way up. Curtsy lunge down, rise all the way up. Very nice. So we get to fully straighten those legs at the top. Yes, 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 all good stuff. Getting into the outer edges of the seat here, especially on the inside leg. Inhale, lower, exhale, rise. Don't forget to breathe, the breath is so important. And let's take it half range. So just halfway up, all the way down. Halfway up, all the way down. Now if you've worked out with me before, you know that when I say all the way, that's whatever it means to you. We're just using that as a frame of reference for the other things that we do. Very good. Lifting up halfway, come back down. Keep it going. I'm so proud of you. Those little one inch pulses are next. Let's make sure we're still staying upright with the torso. So watching that proud dancer's posture. This is kind of a dance, almost a ballet inspired movement. Little teeny pulses, you almost can't see them. That's how small they are. And they're so slow. Slow motion is better for strength. You're maintaining those muscles longer under contraction when you go slow, so you're getting more work. Very good. Now find your lowest curtsy here. Arm swings up and then it's a little reach towards that bar and up. A reach towards the side, come back up. Take it down and up. Really stretch, but drop the shoulder down away from the ear. Last two. 
Last one, now hand comes to hip, heels lower and lift. Lower and lift. Just the heels, nothing else is changing. Very nice. Here's three, two, and one. Hoo hoo, come out of that. I hope you're staying hydrated. Please make sure to keep drinking water. Good idea to have it with you. I don't mind if you pause the video to get water either. I want you to stay healthy. Just promise me you'll come back, okay? Promise me that. And then we're gonna come, of course, to face, uh, I'm gonna face the other way again. We're or face you now. We're gonna take our lunge now. Now we're gonna add a little fancy schmancy component to this. So it's important that the inside leg is the, one, uh, is the one that stays forward. So the outside leg, the one that's furthest away from the bar, is gonna step back. And then we're gonna take the arm up overhead. We're gonna come down for lunge, pause, rotate towards the bar, come back towards the midline, and then come back up, arm comes overhead. Let's do that again. So the back knee is bending to take us down. We rotate, take your belly button towards the bar, come back towards front, and then come all the way up. This little two-part movement. Lunge, rotate, straighten out, come up. Good, let's keep going. It's important that you have enough width between your front foot and your back foot, or I should say maybe, I guess, length, and much, enough distance, that your knees are stacked. So the front knee is stacked over the back, or I'm sorry, the front ankle, and then the back knee is stacked under the back hip, or even slightly behind is okay too. Nice. Very good. Now, next time you are rotated towards the lunge, I want you to, or towards the bar, <laughs> I want you to stay there. We're gonna keep this rotation, but then just lift the legs halfway up and take it down. Halfway up, take it down. So we're staying rotated. The belly is staying towards the belly bar the whole time here. Very good. Ooh, just that half range. Could you pull your belly in a little tighter to get more rotated here? You're staying upright with the torso, even though you've got that rotation. So notice if you're hinging forward. Think about that nice, proud posture. Ooh la la. And then face me again, hand comes to hip for pulses. We're gonna lift one inch up, one inch down. One inch up, one inch down. Now this is coming, this is starting from our lowest position that we can find that our knees are okay with. We do always wanna honor what the knees are telling us or the hips if you have any type of hip issues. Very good. Perfect. Now a little balance challenge here. Could you hold your arms overhead? Maybe both of them come overhead. Very nice. Maybe you lift that front heel for a little extra balance. Not so easy. Amazing, holding, holding, holding. Pull the belly in, drop shoulders down. Very good, now we're gonna do something a little different. So we're gonna take the hand back to the bar. We're still in that lunge, you got it. Arms get, outside arms gonna reach up to the ceiling and then we're gonna hinge forward as you straighten your back leg. So maybe the hand comes down onto the ground inside the foot and then we'll come right back up to that lunge. So back leg straightens as you reach forward. So it's almost like, um, like from yoga, if we were gonna go into like a little rotated lunge here, good. Let's do two more. And let's come out of that. Amazing, that is so, so good. All right, so again, I'm just gonna switch switcheroo. Maybe I should get two of these. That would be great for demonstrating. Um, otherwise, if I set up my camera, it's gonna take me like four hours to <laughs> film this and it probably won't get done. So we're, I'm gonna go, uh, we're just gonna switch sides again. You can move the computer if you need to watch me or if you are using the booty kicker, it does come with an optional little hookup for your iPad. So that would actually be super easy for you to just watch and then you could just kind of have me right there directly in front of you. Okay, time to get back to work. We are gonna take the inside leg forward, back leg lunges, and then we pause at the bottom. Outside arm swings forward as we rotate belly button towards bar. Take it forward again and then come upright. So it's down, twist, come back forward and up. 
down, twist, return, come back home. Nice. Really pull the belly button in as you take that rotation. You'll find a little bit more working into those obliques. Very nice. Always love when I can sneak some standing core work in. That's so fun. Now we're gonna pause at that rotation next time. So next time the belly's facing the bar, we're gonna go halfway up. We'll stay rotated, come back down, halfway up, come back down. Notice if those shoulders are starting to slump forward, let's pull them back down into their sockets. Very good. Whew, very nice. We're strong, we're controlled. Mind over matter here. Very good. And then we're gonna come, so shoulders come forward again for those little tiny pulses. You can take your outside hand of the hip now, that whatever feels comfortable. Little presses up, up, up. So controlled. Very nice. You're in charge, you're the boss. And then static hold is next. So maybe if you're feeling balanced, you can take those arms overhead if you feel safe. Maybe the front heel lifts. Ooh. There we go. And then that heel would come back down now if you were using that. And then as we lower down with the torso, the back leg would go long, but we're still strong with the back leg. Maybe tap it down. And then as you take that arm back up overhead, we're bending the back knee. Straighten out, reach it towards the ground. Bend the back knee. Now I don't care if you're actually coming to touch the ground or not, that's up to you. Very good. Yes, oh, so strong. It's the last thing we do in this series. Here's two. Here's one. Perfect, time to come back up. Fantastic. All right, from here, we're gonna face that bar again. So everything we're doing today is side facing. Um, we're gonna lean into the bar, so we're now gonna start to guide the heart rate down as we just finish up with a little standing glute work. So we're leaning into the bar. It's important that you don't kind of collapse. Here we are still working, so you're just kind of almost pressing yourself up away from the bar, shoulders are squared. And then that standing leg, we're gonna take it up into a little fire hydrant and then take it back into an attitude. So it's a lift, and then you move the knee back in space just a little bit without arching the back. Down, lift, back, bring it forward. It's down, lift, take it back, bring up front. Good, keep going. Nice. Every time you take that knee behind you, see if you can really just firm up in the belly so that we avoid arching in the back. There it is. Good, it's important that we work that lateral movement. We're working into our abductors now. Keeping the knees healthy, keeping the glute muscles balanced. Now, just a little pulse with a fire hydrant. So knee goes down and up, down and up. Amazing. How slow can you go? I know, I know. Those little muscles like to get fatigued pretty quickly here. And then just pulsing for that attitude. So we just take it back an inch and up an inch, forward an inch, back and forward. It's so, so tiny. Make sure you're not collapsing into the bar yet. Keep pressing it away, torso is still turned on. And now we're gonna take some big circles with the knee. Just drop them big circles. See how still you can kind of keep the belly button here though as you do this? Good, I'd rather you have smaller circles and have that pelvic stability than be kind of rolling all over the place here. And then other direction, please. Let's pop back up and we'll make the other side feel just as good. All right, so again, I'll just have my back to you now. We're gonna lean into that bar and it's a lift and lower, lift and lower. We're aiming to have that ankle the same height as the knee the whole time. So rather than letting it drag in or out, just keeping it kind of the same height as that knee. So good. Exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. I'm so glad you chose to work out with me today. I love knowing that I can pop into your living room. 
straight here from my home. And hip circles are next. So draw big circles with the knees, but not so big that your belly button's moving all the way around. You wanna really kind of firm up in that pelvis. Good, pulling in the whole pelvic floor. How about we go in the opposite direction? Fantastic. Well, I've got some good news for you. We are done with the up with the standing leg work. We are going to move into a little bit of standing upper body work, and then we'll move on to the floor. So we're going to start with our push-ups. You're going to move the feet back in space, taking um, a wide grip push-up. So that means the elbows are going to uh, the shoulder wrists, pardon me, are going to come a little bit wider than the shoulders. Elbows move out to the side and then back up to the side and then back up. So heels are off the ground at this point. The further back you have those feet, the more challenging this is gonna be. If you're long-legged and you really wanna take those feet far behind you, I would recommend having some weights weighted in the little weight plates of the bar. Um, everything we do today except that, we really could get away without using weights, so I didn't use them. Um, but that's gonna give you a little bit more stability if you put those weights down in here. And if you're not, if you don't have, if you're using like a chair, maybe at this point just move to a couch or even the wall is a great option for this. Very good. Now we're gonna do the same kind of series that we did with our leg work we're gonna take for the upper body work. So we're gonna go halfway in and then straighten all the way back out. So halfway in, straighten all the way back out. It's important that your shoulders are down away from the ears. Belly is pulling in really tight. We don't want those hips coming forward of the shoulders. Now let's up the ante. Let's take it towards the bar as low as we can go towards the bar and then only halfway up. So we're only partially straightening. Ooh, there it is. Very good. Strengthening the chest and back and shoulders. Now take it as low as you can, just one inch pulses, just barely pressing away. Just pull, lift, lift, lift. It's just barely moving that chest away from the bar. Nice. For three, two, one, so good. Let's walk those feet in under the hips, hips come back, and just take a nice flat back fold over here before we move to the other, or move to our tricep dips. Maybe bend the right knee, and then the left. Good, let's come up, and then we're gonna take our back to the bar for our tricep dips. Now, I'm a little on the short side, so I'm like five foot one, so we, kind of, we shorter girls kinda of maybe struggle a touch with this, but hopefully um, this will feel just right for you. So you're gonna take the feet out a little bit, Heels can lift, you can kind of soften into the knees, and then you're gonna to start to lower down and then straighten the arms. Lower down, straighten the arms. Very good. You know what I should probably try? I'm just brainstorming with this as, as we go. I wonder, for us short gals, if we put our feet on a block, I wonder if that would make the whole thing better. Might have to try that, I don't know. Maybe you can try it and see if, it, if it's a thing. Very good, let's make sure the shoulders are really pressing away from the ears. We don't wanna dump into those shoulders. Now, could you go halfway down, all the way up? Yes, halfway down, all the way up. Oh, I know, I know. These are smaller muscle groups, so we won't do quite as many reps. Now, here it comes, let's go lower half, partially up, back down, partially up, yes. And then just pulses, just pulses. I know the pulses may not look much different from that bottom half. These are small movements, but you're doing amazing. Getting those triceps in on the action for two, one, and come all the way up. That is it, perfect. Now we're gonna make our way down onto the ground. So a little bit more shoulder work, a lot more core work here to make sure we have a total body workout here. So from here, we're gonna come on to our forearms on our mat and it's going to be a little leg lift and then take it out to the side oh yeah there it is it's a lift 
out to the side. So ideally we're keeping that foot off the ground for the most burn. Of course you could tap it down in between if you need. You could also take the other knee down to the ground anytime you need for a little tiny breather. And then let's take, uh, let's just take both knees down to the second before doing the other side. A little side note for forearm planks, we always have our hands apart so they're parallel with the, um, the, with the elbows. So we can keep the, the chest open and let's try the other side. Good, it's a little lift. Take it out to the side, so good. We're trying to keep the hips so still as we do this. Keep that outside hip just as low as the inside hip, please. Very good, or the hip that's working. Yes, yes, yes. All good, getting into those obliques. Belly is working hard here. Shoulders are stabilizing. Press the earth away from you. Last one. There it is. We're gonna come onto long arms now, if that's okay on your wrists. And we're going to spread the fingers wide so that we're protecting the wrists. We're gonna take the right knee, tap it in towards the right elbow, move it towards the left, tick tock back to the right, now thread that leg through, right leg comes underneath the body, straighten that leg out, a little IT band stretch, and then, whoo, here it comes. Maybe see if you can take that foot off the ground. It's a little, ooh, and tap back down. Ooh, it is maybe, maybe it's just in your mind that it's happening, but I guarantee those muscles are working. Amazing, and then we're gonna give ourselves a little stretch, a little reward before we go to the other side. So we're gonna lower the hips all the way down. Maybe the outside hip comes first. Top of the foot comes onto the mat. And then just mm, finding a comfortable spot here to find a nice stretch. Releasing that IT band. Very good, back toes tucked to come out of this. Take your time, press back up. Kind of wiggle that leg back through. And then let's just come back to the other side. So left knee pulls in towards the left elbow, tick tock to the right, take it back to the left and then thread it through under the body, Whew. really firm up in the inner thighs, hug those hip bones together and then squeeze and lower, squeeze and lower. So we're in a plank here, we're not in a down dog. Let's keep the hips nice and level with the shoulders. So good, last one. <laughs> and then let's lower down into that stretch. So we take the top leg all the way onto the mat, untuck the toes. Lifting up whatever feels nice here. Let's try to take the heart forward of the shoulders. Very good, tucking the toes once again. We'll press ourselves back up, unthread that leg. And then we're gonna roll over onto our side for a side plank. So for the side plank, I'm gonna challenge you today to maybe try both um, legs off the ground, so both knees lifted. You can always take a break in between if it gets to be too much. So we're gonna take a little top leg lift, arm comes up high, and then we're gonna alternate that with a little rotation. So thread the needle, open it up, and then maybe lift that leg. Good, rotate, little leg lift, little rotation, little leg lift. Maybe the last time. Stay facing forward now, maybe hand comes to the hip as you hip, dip the hips down a little bit and up, down and up. Good, press the ground away from you with that bottom arm so you're not sagging in the shoulders, please. Good, for three two, one, and then we'll take it over to the other side. So a little leg lift, maybe arms staying high into a rotation. Leg lift, rotation is next. Working that spine in every direction it was designed to move in. So nice. Whew, we wanted this to be a total body workout. Get her done. Last time here. And then that hand comes to the hip. It's a little dip and lift. Dip and lift. You got this. Strengthening the side of the waist. Here's two more. 
and we are ready to come down onto our back. Not quite ready to rest, but that's coming soon. Little bit more core work from our supine position, which just means lying down on our back. Now it's important for the, all of these next three series that we do that we keep the arch of the back down onto the mat. So that essentially there is no arch anymore. We do that by pulling the belly in towards the spine. If at any point that becomes just too difficult to do, you can slide your palms under your hips face down to form a little shelf, which is gonna help prevent that back from arching. Um, but if you can do it just with your belly muscles, that's gonna work the abdominals a little bit harder. So from here, um, we're gonna take the uh, knees wide, but heels stay together. And it's gonna be a little squeeze out of the diagonal. Toes are apart. Three little abductions to take legs apart, together, apart, together, apart, together, and then draw it back in, shoulders towards the outside of the hips, and we'll do that again. Good, so squeeze those inner thighs together. It's out, out, out. Take it in, but you're not taking the knees all the way in towards the shoulders. You're just kind of keeping them just kind of right above the belly button so that we have to keep the belly muscles working and then take it out long. Little squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Bring it back in. Let's do that one more time. Nice. And then from here, you're gonna take the uh, legs both overhead. You're gonna point the toes. And then we're gonna take some leg circles here. We're gonna take them in opposite directions. Some legs move away from each other. They come together. Remember, we're pressing the arch of the back down. You need to take your palms underneath your hips at this point to do that, feel free. Inhales, start the circles, exhales, finish them. And then let's go in the opposite direction. Try to keep those hip bones really still. So if you feel like either the back is arching or those hips are doing a little dance, try to maybe make the circles a little smaller, pull the belly in a little tighter, but keep breathing. Now we're gonna do circles, but the, both legs are gonna move in the same direction. So we're gonna lift the legs up to the ceiling, squeeze those legs together, so glue them. They're not gonna move apart this time. Toes are pointed. We'll move the whole thing as though it's one leg in a circle. Take it back home. Now, I'd rather see small circles here and keep the hip bones relatively quiet. If you notice the hips are wiggling and wobbling, maybe make them a little smaller. Glue the arch of the back down onto the mat, please. And then we'll take the whole shape in the opposite direction, just like we're tracing a clock. Nice big breaths, fuel this movement, please. Nice. And then, whoo, very good. From here, we're gonna reach the, uh, to actually just take the legs all the way down. Whoo, that feels nice. We are almost ready to stretch and cool down. One more thing to do here. Could you reach your arms overhead? Your legs are long, and then right leg, reach it towards the left. I prefer to keep my head down on this one. Inhale, open. Exhale, opposite arm to opposite leg, and reach. I don't care if they touch or not. You're working those abdominal muscles regardless. So just alternating reaching. I prefer to keep the head on the ground. No one needs extra strain in the neck muscles. Really focus on utilizing that breath to engage the abdominals. So good. How about one more each side? You have been a rock star. This was a doozy today. Good. And then, this is gonna feel so good. Let's cool down. Let's take it into a nice figure four stretch. So we're gonna bend both knees, right ankle's gonna cross across the left thigh. Keep it here or draw the whole shape in, interlacing hands behind either the left hamstring or the front of the left shin. Let's try to send the tailbone heavy down into the mat though so we can decompress the spine. Breathing, allowing that heart rate to really settle back into a calm state. And then listening carefully, you're gonna take the left foot back down to the ground. Right arm is gonna come out to the side of the shoulder. 
and then it use that left hand on the ankle that's crossed over to gently guide the whole shape down into a little spinal twist in this pigeon shape. So a little low back release here. Maybe looking out towards the right hand. Whatever is comfortable for the left hand. I like to keep it on the ankle, but you might prefer to have it on the thigh or around the knee. Letting everything go. Honoring the body for the work it's done today. And then taking that right arm back towards the center, you're actually gonna help pull the shape of the legs because they're pretty heavy in this shape back towards the midline to protect the back. We'll uncross and then take it to the other side. So left heel across right thigh. Hug it into your chest, hands behind hamstring or in front of shin. Tailbone moves back down towards the far edge of your mat. Silky smooth breaths. Releasing in the seat here, the booty that we worked so hard on that booty kicker. And then let's take it to the opposite direction. So foot comes down to the ground first, guiding it over till that knee falls down to the side. Left arm is out by the side of the shoulder. Take your gaze, your vision over towards your left hand, counter stretch. use that left hand to grab hold of that whole shape of the legs help assist with moving it back towards the center let's take the soles of the feet together knees butterfly out feeling the rise and fall of your breath happy baby is next the shoulder, knees come in um, to the sides of the ribs towards the shoulders. You can either hold on to the outer edges of the thighs, the calves. You can hold on to your feet only if you can still send your tailbone heavy onto the ground. So you want to feel like you're pressing a little imaginary marble down with the tailbone. Mm. Lacing into those inner hips. Maybe taking it out into the splits if that feels nice. And then bending the knees again, let's draw them in towards your chest. And rock it up into a seated position. Hey, thanks for joining me today on my outside courtyard for this booty kicker workout. Wanted to let you know a little bit about the booty kicker just in case you wanted to get your hands on one. It's one of my favorite things. So don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And then stay tuned to find out how to get a booty kicker. The booty kicker is my favorite freestanding bar. I used to not really love freestanding bars because you can't put any weight against them. The Booty Kicker changes all that. It's portable, it's collapsible so that it can store easily under a bed or in the corner of a closet. But most importantly, it's designed so that you can put weight against it. This means you can do your flat back foldovers. It means it can help support with balance, push-ups. You can tie resistance tubing to it. This is such a game changer for at-home bar workouts, and I can't wait for you to try it. It even has this cool optional iPad accessory so that you can follow along with workouts from yours truly. And you can save $20 and get a free Bender Ball as a special gift when you use my affiliate link, wealthyboss.com forward slash booty. I receive a small referral commission whenever you make a purchase, which actually saves you money while continuing to support the free online classes that I provide. I can't wait for you to try it, so check out wealthyboss.com forward slash booty and let me know what you think.